What is going on everyone and welcome to this, the first mission of I'm sure what will be many of my adventures in the Kerbal Space Program Making History Expansion Pack DLC add-on, whatever they're calling it. And what better ship to recreate first of all than the amazing and you know legendary Saturn V moon rocket, which for those of you that don't know, <laughs> somehow is the rocket that carried the NASA astronauts to the moon, and obviously to this day remains the only rocket capable of such a mission. And here it is here, facilitated with the use of the new parts in the Kerbal Space Program expansion pack. I thought about doing like a generic overview video, which I guess that's kind of what my mission builder review um, was. But I thought about kind of doing a review very in-depth of all the individual parts, but I know what you guys want. You guys don't want... you probably do, but you guys... I know, I know in my heart, in your heart of heart you don't want that. You just want to see what the Saturn V would look like in Kerbal Space Program. And I think my interpretation of it is pretty, is pretty good. I mean, I did have to get this thrown together with relatively high amounts of speed, so there are obviously inaccuracies such as there's no uh, separatrons to force the boosters, boosters apart and the interstage fairings aren't deployed very accurately, but generally it's pretty good. We can get a good zoom down actually of that lower stage and you can see the five F1 engines of the first stage. There they go deployed. So the middle one uh, had locked gimbal, the ones on the outside had gimbal, just so I could try and make this as accurate as possible. Anyway, enough of that, so now we can activate stage two, which is the five J2 engines, and this is going to basically carry us most of the way into orbit now. But yes, that's um, that was that. So, this is a pretty exciting thing. So like I say, the focus of this expansion pack, it's mainly the mission builder, but it also is to add a bunch of historic parts so you can recreate lots of historic missions, and I have big plans for things to recreate, namely uh, the Saturn V. I also want to recreate the Saturn VIII, which is a video I've been putting off for basically a year now, waiting for the DLC to drop so I could do that video true justice by having the bigger parts available to me. Saturn VIII is a very cool story, by the way. If anyone, if anyone wants like a sneak preview of what that video might entail, uh, Vintage Space is quite a nice summary of it, although I, my script currently goes uh, well, it goes way too much in, in depth. We need to. Uh, I need to trim the fat down on that now. I've got the uh, the actual means to make that video. So with that, we can deploy that stage and get rid of the launch escape system and get ready to fire up the third stage, which is just a single J2 engine. And yes, that is. I'm pretty sure that is actually meant to be a J2 analog in the game. The ones we were using for the initial stage were also the in-game analogs for the F1. And we can do a circularization burn. And this, in this, this is in like the actual Saturn V now. This stage was unique in that this engine could, well, at least in the initial lifting stages, at least, this engine was unique in that it could fire not once, but twice. So we're going to do one burn to circularize, and then we'll do a second burn to get ourselves on a lunar trajectory. Or I guess, I guess, in Kerbal Space Program, it would be lunar trajectory. So what's interesting about our course to the Mun? is we're going to be going on a free return trajectory. What is a free return trajectory, you may ask? Well, if you look at that, if you look at the uh, the purple orbit line, that's kind of the orbit we're going to be getting on after our encounter with the Mun, you'll see that our periapsis puts us below the atmospheric level of Kerbin, so in the event of engine failure, um, we wouldn't just be ending, we wouldn't end up stranded in space and, uh, you know, leaving our crews to succumb to the radiation out there, um, we're actually going to be end we'd actually end up on a trajectory that takes us back to Kerbin in order to land safely. So that's what a free return free return trajectory is. God, I should probably I should probably slow down with my voice. So uh, it's it's already happened, <laughs> but there is the actual Apollo lander snugly. Well, it was snugly inside that interstage fairing. Now we can reconfigure the craft to dock the uh, the two parts together, and obviously. Well, that's it. <laughs> Ditch the, 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 the transfer stage and get ready to circularize around the Mun. And the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that that um, engine on the command module is another new part. And this is the analog part to the actual Apollo command pod uh, engine, I believe. I mean, it looks pretty similar and it's optimized to work in a vacuum, hence the enormous engine bell. So I'm pretty sure this is meant to represent the actual... Apollo-style command pod engine. So, 
Now we've transferred our crew to the lander, we can undock. We have to make sure we deploy the landing legs to be as faithful as we can, because the real Apollo lander, the engine couldn't fire until the landing legs were deployed. And this is an Apollo 11 replica. Well, I mean, it's not a particularly accurate replica, because it's a very round base rather than an angular one. But, you know, it has gold panels, so we have that going for it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the engine couldn't fire until the landing legs were deployed, and it's an Apollo 11 replica because um, it doesn't have a rover, basically. Now, the uh, there are now Apollo-style rover wheels added to the Making History expansion pack, and those wheels can be deployed and folded up. So I think I'd like to do a follow-up video in which we recreate an Apollo lander that has a rover. I think so it's not a complete rehash of this video. I might send that mission to, the, to, to Juna or something, uh, just to make it increase the variety uh, of uh, content on this channel. <laughs> I say that this is now like what the fourth Apollo style mission I've done but I feel like this is somewhat justifiable now because we have the actual Apollo pieces and um, what, 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 what better time there is to talk about the actual command pod we have here so this is very obviously supposed to represent the lunar lander uh, command pod so we have all those monopellant thrusters actually built into the pod to help keep ourselves stable which is just as well because this thing has barely any sort of SAS control I bet you basically have to use the monopellant thrusters to orient this in any direction because the actual you know SAS reaction wheels are very very weak if at all does this even have SAS reaction wheels I don't know Regardless, <laughs> it's you pretty much need a monopellant if you want to if you value your sanity whatsoever. But there we are, touched down. I didn't really talk about that much about the ascent because I guess the footage kind of did all that for me. I didn't really need to explain in depth. And there's Jebediah, who uh, probably needs to go on a diet if his weight is able to top the topple the lander in such an extreme way like that. But enough of that. We need to plant our flag. So I thought I'd go for the uh, the NASA flag that just comes with the game because this is a recreation of a NASA mission. And the last Apollo recreation I did, um, or at least the last Apollo mission that got you know a lot of views, uh, I used a British flag just because that was the default flag for my space program. But my God, a lot of American viewers got triggered by that. Oh, hang on. There goes the upper stage. So we went with the NASA flag. But yeah, we did a little camera tools uh, shot of the. Um, of the ascent, and you can see us launching the separate, the second stage of the lunar lander. And uh, what's interesting, uh, at least in this in this particular recreation, in my particular ship, is the fact that we only have three parts in this. We have a docking port, we have the command pod, and we have an engine. Because that is right. Not only does this command pod have monopellant tanks and RCS thrusters built in, but it also has an oxidizer and liquid fuel reserve integrated into it as well. And enough delta V with, with this particular engine to circularize around the MUN and to perform lots of correction burns so we can get ourselves on a nice encounter with the mothership. We didn't have to do too many correction burns to be fair, we have a pretty close encounter as it is, but it's nice to have that extra wiggle room, particularly for sort of I, I always feel like a bit douchey by saying less experienced players, but I, I, I guess I, I do have a bit more experience than the lay person. So, you know, if, if you're not as good as at rendezvous, then you have a lot of fuel left to play around with in order to you kind of correct any mistakes or inaccuracies during your ascent. Um, we can just line ourselves up with a docking port and dock with the mothership. And there it is. So I guess uh, it's now that time in the mission where we plan our trajectory back home. So we can orient ourselves prograde. Well, first of all, let's not uh, let's not leave our astronauts stranded in that lander can. We'll transfer them into the Apollo style command pod and initiate our prograde burn in order to get ourselves an encounter with Kerbin's atmosphere. Now, at this point, you may notice I have quite a lot of Delta V remaining, as was the case for a lot of my previous stages. Hence, why you may have noticed that uh, I had um, I didn't have the fuel tanks fully filled. That's because I wanted to aim to have the aesthetic of the Saturn V, but obviously, Kerbal Space Program, the actual system that Kerbin sits in, is far more forgiving than the actual human system so we don't actually need as much fuel as the parts provide so i kind of drained some of the tanks and ditched some of the tanks before they were actually empty to try and sort of be as faithful to the saturn 5 as i could but um obviously that's not a particularly realistic approach to the mission but that's why in case anyone was wondering and so with that here we are hitting the atmosphere and you know just holding retrograde now at this point um it's not happened yet but you may have noticed there is a we've got quite a pointy lander compared to what the command pod normally looks like and that's because we have a shroud at the very end to conceal the parachutes 
So if we just deploy that fairing there, you'll have, be able to have a good look at it. And there we are, and you can see those parachutes cannot be deployed while stowed. Uh, which doesn't make much sense to me, because if we have a look at the actual command pod itself, we can see those parachutes are very much exposed to the atmosphere, and no matter what I did, I could not get those parachutes to work, even by modifying the save file. It just caused the Kraken to spawn and everyone died. So, at this point I realised it was time to break out my ingenuity. So, what we did was I EVA'd the Kerbals and deployed their personal parachutes, which is a feature of KSP 1.4. It's not actually part of the DLC, so if you find yourself in a similar predicament, um, you can do this. <laughs> With the last Kerbal, I couldn't quite get anyone EVA in time, but somehow he survived the crash because, um, well, you know, Kerbals are, they are different to you and I. They are of, they are made of a stronger material. So uh, I guess we can just sort of show a little shot of the other Kerbals making it down to prove that I did in fact get everyone home safely. Because this solution was far more preferable to redoing the whole mission again, thereby wasting a whole evening. Just because squad can't bug check. Uh, shots fired, please squad please fix. But that was it. I hope you enjoyed this trip back to November 1967. And if you want me to cover any other particular topic, uh, leave it down below. I will be doing a dedicated kind of overview of the KSP, you know, expansion pack. Maybe I'll do it as a live stream, who knows. But if you want me to cover anything specifically, leave it down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, follow me on Twitter or Discord for all the latest updates or from what I'm doing in my life and on this channel, I guess, as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, on screen are some videos. You can just... The titles are visible, I guess. And uh, yes, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day.